Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Toby, you wanna say hi? No? I hope you're good, cause I am great. We're still not gonna focus today. Off to a great start. It's Fern Friday, or Fern, whenever you're watching this. You should love the view of the gingers that are encroaching through my lovely clump of ostrich ferns. <laughs> it looks great, doesn't it? Well, better late than never. The ostrich ferns tend to look their best up until like, uh, I wanna say like mid-July, but uh, as the heat rolls in, they don't always look so great. This is one of my clumps of the ostrich ferns, Matukia struthiopterus, which I have also heard pronounced as Matusia struthiopterus. Doesn't make a difference to me how it's pronounced. Same plant either way. Ostrich firms form nice dense clumps spreading through underground rhizomatic growth. Some people eat the fiddleheads. I don't think I'm gonna be one of those people but if that's one of that's something you're into they you know, hey, have to go for it. I apologize for the appearance of this fern. I should have probably done this fern Friday first. Like I said the ostrich ferns they're hardy zones three through seven. Super super cold tolerant fern but they do tend to grow much more lush and look more vigorous when they're planted, one in a fairly sheltered location from wind, which this really isn't, and also where temperatures don't get like really, really hot. When temperatures go above where I live, it seems like right around the 90 degree Fahrenheit point is when they start to not look so good. But they look absolutely lovely from early spring up until that point when it starts to get kind of hot and then they slowly just kind of roll back their foliage and start to get a little bit more brown. It kind of continues on until fall when they go dormant for the winter time. This has been a very mild year so far. Like there have been a few hot days and there was one just not too long ago which is why it has some spots on it, some browning, and then sometimes my dogs like to run through it. These will form a nice clump in, like I said, preferably shade, but when I've planted these in the shade before here, they didn't do so hot. This gets an awful lot of sun, mostly afternoon sun. They need a soil that's very well drained and it needs to stay consistently moist. I don't let it dry out for very long. I actually have some tiny little drip heads sort of spread out through in here so that three times a day, I know that sounds like a lot, but if I don't have it going three times a day, it runs for about a minute, two minutes, something like that, uh, every eight hours. If I don't do that, then they don't end up looking very good with the heat. So there's kind of like some ways around things, but and you can see ultimately, even with that, they're still not gonna be thrilled about getting a ton of sun with a lot of heat. But there also are like no ferns that can be grown around here where I live that can take a lot of sun. Ostrich ferns have a really pretty vase shape to them. The plumes come, oh, 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 hello, Ginger. These fronds, which do resemble an ostrich plume. That's where the name comes from. I believe struthi or struthio is for ostrich and pteris is fern, yes? It's very lush and fluffy, like an ostrich feather. So in the springtime, all those little fiddleheads start popping up. The fiddleheads are like the little curled pieces of frond as they're starting to emerge. It's before they emerge, so it's immature fern fronds. Those come up in the early spring, late winter where I live. This is a fairly warm spot in the yard, so maybe a little bit earlier here. They end up giving the appearance of a very well filled in area that has just a whole bunch of nice vase-shaped clumps of fern. So if I had these in a location that was getting a morning sun for a few hours and then filtered light throughout the rest of the day, which would be preferable to these guys. The only place I have like that's my front yard and I never go out in my front yard, so I just I enjoy them back here. Even though they die back a little bit earlier, I'm like, I'm, it's worth the sacrifice to me. This clump's been around for a very long time. I actually planted these ferns from a bag of roots from Walmart, like, I don't even know how long ago. And this clump of fern here, this is probably, I would say about probably five feet by four feet, something like that. You can see my ginger has volunteered itself to grow through the middle of it, which is fine. I'm gonna let it do it this year because the, it was a bad winter. So I'm surprised that the ginger came back at all. But next year I'm gonna be dividing that up and moving it. because that, That's not okay. Sorry, as I was saying, if these were in a location that was getting morning sun filtered afternoon light, and then again with regular irrigation, nice, rich, well-draining soil, then I could expect them to get maybe a foot taller, but just 
the regular ostrich fern where I live here in Missouri, I'm in St. Louis, they don't tend to get too terribly big. I've never seen them any bigger than like maybe 30 inches at the most. But the cooler the climate, then typically the larger you can expect them to get. So like these aren't native to the Pacific Northwest, but that sort of climate, I would think up in like Minnesota and Canada, Michigan is far, like where summers aren't scorching, scorching hot, I bet they get very large and especially where there's a lot of precipitation. For me, this has been the toughest, most hardy fern I have ever grown. I've tried a lot of ferns. I've had plenty of ferns that do pretty well for me during the summertime, but it's the problem is usually get them to come back from winter, from their dormancy. Sometimes they just don't come back. And I think that's because I have a very heavy clay soil, which isn't ideal for most ferns. They don't really like that. Ostrich fern doesn't seem to mind it. I'll, however, I have amended this area fairly heavily over the years with some sand and gypsum and whatnot to help aerate the soil somewhat, get it nice and loose so that things drain more freely through it. And this area is elevated a little bit too, so water's not going to collect up around where the plants are when they're dormant. Why was that hard to say? And in late summer to early fall, these odd looking fronds come popping out the middle. Those are the fertile fronds. So a lot of ferns, their spores show up on the bottom sides of their foliage. Not with the ostrich fern. Ostrich ferns, like I said, late summer, early fall, more late summer though, they send up these kind of odd looking fronds that come up out of the middle. They're usually colored a little bit differently from the others. They're really kind of prehistoric looking, aren't they? And you can see the coloration on them is very different from the rest of the fronds. Instead of having a pinna on them that's going to open up into a nice lush leaf, it's almost like they have tiny little, I don't know, pipe cleaners on the ends of them. So those fun, neat looking fertile fronds, they come popping up, they hang out for a little while and they start to change color. And that's what's going on in there. That's the spore action. I believe cinnamon ferns are another fern that do something fairly similar to this, where when it's time to start putting out spores, they'll shoot up really tall, extra long fronds. Those are the fertile fronds. So you can already see that one in the center that's really dark. That one's kind of done doing its thing. The rest of them will start to do that too. Well, most of them, not all of them. I've only ever had the ostrich ferns pop up for me unexpectedly like a couple of times. They haven't been something that's grown very aggressively, but I know in climates that are really, really, really ideal for them, they will spread vigorously. They'll fill in an area quickly, very, very quickly. So if you have a big area that you want to get filled in with just beautiful, lush, what I would consider to be kind of a chartreuse foliage, but I've seen a lot of places that describe it as really dark green. Maybe that's just my eyes. I don't know. It does look kind of dark in the video on my viewfinder, but in person, it's more of like a light chartreuse green. See, to me, light green. I don't know. What do you think? They're supposed to be non-toxic to dogs and cats and people. Still, don't eat it just to be safe. Even with the fiddleheads, people eat those. They say they taste kind of like asparagus. Even with that, I think that they need to be at the right like size or maturity, don't they? Does anybody know anything about that? And, and who out there is eating their ferns? Let me know. I don't know anything about eating the ferns. I don't fertilize mine very heavily when I have fertilized, not even heavily. They have shown signs of stress from it. A little bit of, like you can see some, you'll see discolored foliage and stuff like that. So I just amend my soil in the springtime. I use Espoma Biotone starter and I use the Espoma um, plant tone. If you have really alkaline soil then maybe a holly tone would work but I still wouldn't use too much. And then I do occasionally work in earthworm castings and whatnot just to help enrich the soil to give the fungus and bacteria something to feed on so that that nitrogen can get released and all the fun good things can happen around the roots of the plants. But yeah, liquid fertilizers, I don't really mess with it. I think that they seem like a plant that would probably enjoy a seaweed fertilizer. Does anybody know anything about that? Comment down below, let me know. And yeah, like I said, mine isn't exactly in its full glory right now. Typically this fern looks its best, like I've said, I think I've said multiple times, in the spring when it's emerging and then up until temperatures start to get kind of hot and then it goes downhill and just keeps doing that until fall time. And even I've seen them grown in spots where they only get morning sun and even those tend to, when it gets really hot outside, 
they start to get kind of shabby looking, you know? They just don't really appreciate really hot temperatures. Man, are they tough. These are really, really tough ferns. Now, there's a variety of ostrich fern called the king. So that's the Matusia struthiopterus, the king and it supposedly gets much larger. I did plant several of those in my berm. Those were just planted in a vlog not too long ago, so there's not much to see there. I can't really say anything about the size. I won't notice anything about that for probably a few years. <laughs> I've been trying to find a spot where it's like mostly just pretty fronds and not seeing all the burnt ones. That kind of works. I don't mind that. Yep, nope, that doesn't work. Perfection. There we go. Now, when I have divided these up, because the clumps still get pretty tight and spread very far, so sometimes they do need to be divided up. Maybe they'll take up much more of an area than you want them to and uh, when that becomes the case i usually wait until early fall very late summer to do any division i prefer to do it when the plants have started to go into their dormancy and then i relocate them put just a little bit of mulch on top of them and then they just pop right back up in the spring wherever they've been planted totally fine i've read from some places to do that in the early spring right as they're emerging which i don't know i mean maybe when i planted these they were in just dormant roots you just run more of a risk of a transplant shock when you dig them up when they've just started to grow they have what's very similar to a bulb that sits around just above the ground during the winter months and the fall there's energy stored in that and and in the rhizome down below in the ground so if the plant hasn't started to root itself out or if it's just starting to and you cut that up there's a potential that there's a risk being run to basically cut off the plant's opportunity to get itself going does that make sense oh, i prefer to do it in the fall just to be safe yeah that's it that's the ostrich fern it's <laughs> not the, i really wish i had filmed this like three weeks ago when it was just looking beautiful but instead you know welcome to my channel just, you just have to trust me it's normally an absolutely gorgeous fern google it beautiful pictures out there and hey i know some of the viewers out there some of y'all are up in canada what i would imagine these probably absolutely stunning up there the further north you go probably look really good yeah, comment down below go ahead anything you have to add that's the whole point of fern friday or fern whenever you're watching this is everybody get in there and start being plant nerds together always fun learning right i have all my social media linked down below you can comment down below just say hi how's everybody doing hope you're good and don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up makes a big difference for the channel for the videos i really appreciate it so thank you and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell oh, i upload multiple times a week and that way you'll know when new videos come out I hope everybody's doing well. I already said it, but I say it twice because I mean it. Having a great day, great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.